Hello everyone, this is a video lecture about DNA extraction. DNA extraction is a routine procedure used in molecular biology laboratory. This is the starting point for numerous applications ranging from fundamental research to routine diagnostic and therapeutic decision making. The DNA extraction process frees the DNA from the cell and then separates it from the cellular fluid and proteins, so what you have left is just pure DNA. The isolation of DNA is needed for genetic analysis, which may be used for scientific, medical, or forensic purposes. DNA extraction may also be called DNA isolation and DNA purification. These expressions are often used interchangeably for the same processes. However, there are some slight differences between them. When we say DNA isolation, this aims to get as much of the DNA out of your sample. When DNA purification is used, this is done to reduce or even to eliminate the contamination from the isolated DNA. And when we say DNA extraction, this is just one specific way to achieve both isolation and purification. As mentioned earlier, DNA extraction techniques are a starting point for most molecular biological experiments because in order to be able to analyze or to study the DNA, you first have to be able to get it out of the cell. And this is the DNA extraction process. So where do we get DNA? Where does it come from? The sources for DNA isolation are very diverse. Basically, it can be isolated from any living or dead organism. Common sources for DNA isolation may include human specimens like blood, hair, semen, saliva, epithelial cells, and so on. They can also come from bacteria or animal tissues or any plant tissues. We can even use stored samples that come from archived tissue samples or frozen blood or tissue or exhumed bones. And it can also be taken from any ancient animal, human, or plant samples. DNA is found within the cells. For eukaryotes, it is found enveloped inside the nucleus, while in prokaryotes, it's found inside the cytoplasm. One idea that we have to understand before we proceed to the process of DNA extraction itself is that inside these cells are other components that are present with the DNA. Examples would be enzymes, proteins, and other organic and inorganic compounds. And all of these non-nucleic acid components or non-DNA components, everything else aside from the DNA, should be removed in the process. The process of DNA extraction may vary depending on many factors like target molecule or sample type. For example, Genomic DNA extraction procedures may differ from procedures to extract mRNA or plasmid extraction procedures. Also, the extraction of genomic DNA can diverge in techniques according to the sample type, such as blood or tissue. But in general, there are three basic steps involved in DNA extraction, and that is lysis, precipitation, and purification. The first step in DNA extraction is DNA lysis. And in this step, the nuclear membrane, the cell membrane, and the cell wall of the cells are broken up to release the DNA. And there are two methods of doing this. It can either be physical or chemical method. To break open the cell wall and the cell membrane, we can use both or either physical and chemical methods. But when it comes to nuclear membrane lysis, we mostly use chemical methods. The lysis step is also commonly referred to as cell disruption or cell lysis, since we are breaking open the cell to expose the DNA from within. The first method is the physical method by mechanical disruption. This breaks open the cells. Now mechanical disruption is particularly important when using plant cells because they have a tough cell wall. 
examples of mechanical disruptions would be by the use of a blender or maybe mortar and pestle or cutting the specimen into different smaller pieces like leaves or the use of a sonicator. The second method is the chemical method and this uses either detergents or enzymes. An example of a detergent is the SDS, also known as the lauryl sulfate, which is a detergent that is useful for the rapid disruption of biological membranes. Enzymes increase the efficiency of DNA recovery during the extraction procedure. Enzymes work better than any other chemicals because it directly targets the bonds of the amino acids to digest the protein. Examples of enzymes used in the first step are proteinase K, which are used for animal cells which are rich in proteins. Cellulase is used for plant cells to degrade the cellular components, which is primarily cellulose. Lytocase may be used for yeast. And for gram-positive organisms, we can use lysozyme. The next step, which is known as the precipitation step, separates the freed DNA from the cellular debris. After the completion of the lysis step, the DNA has been freed from the nucleus, but it is now mixed with other cell parts. This is what we call as the cell extract. And this contains significant quantities of detergents, proteins, reagents that were used during the cell lysis. Precipitation involves the use of sodium ions, which will neutralize any negative charge in the DNA molecules, making them less water soluble and more stable. Next is alcohol, such as ethanol or isopropanol. This is added and causes the DNA to precipitate out of the aqueous solution because it is not soluble in alcohol. To get a clean sample of DNA, it is necessary to remove as much of the cellular debris as possible. And this can be done by a variety of methods. An example is the addition of a protease, which is a protein enzyme, which degrades any DNA-associated proteins and other cellular proteins. Alternatively, some of the cellular debris can be removed by filtering the sample. The precipitation step is important so that we can come up with the DNA in its pure form. The presence of cellular debris like proteins, lipids, polysaccharides, and some other organic or inorganic compounds in the DNA preparation can interfere with the DNA analysis methods. They can also reduce the quality of the DNA and this can lead to its shorter storage life. After the separation of DNA during the process of precipitation, where the DNA is now located in the ethanol area, it is now rinsed with alcohol, either with isopropanol or absolute ethanol, and this process is known as purification. Purification removes all of the remaining cellular debris and unwanted material. Now, once the DNA is completely purified, it is usually dissolved in water, again, for the convenient storage and handling before specimen processing. So after performing the three steps in DNA extraction, what's next? For further laboratory work, it is important to know the concentration and the quality of the DNA. So we have to assess concentration and quality of the DNA. Spectrophotometric readings may be used to determine the concentration and the purity of the DNA sample. Alternatively, gel electrophoresis can also be used to show the presence of the DNA in the sample and to give an indication of its quality. Now, once successful extraction of the DNA is done, we can now proceed to other molecular analysis, including PCR, sequencing, fingerprinting, cloning, and so on. So now we have learned about the different steps in the extraction methods, and there's three steps. Now it's time to familiarize ourselves with the different methods that are used for extracting DNA. DNA extraction methods are broadly categorized into two, 
the chemical, and the physical DNA extraction methods. Now, even though there are a lot of different methods for extracting DNA, the steps, the three steps for the DNA extraction remain the same in all the different types of methods. The physical extraction method makes use of magnetic beads or different kinds of paper. The chemical DNA extraction method, also called as the solution-based extraction method, is subdivided into organic and inorganic. The organic solvent-based DNA extraction method is based on the use of organic substances such as phenol and chloroform. But due to the harmful nature of both phenol and chloroform, the method is restricted. Nonetheless, phenol and chloroform DNA extraction method is one of the best methods among all. This method is also known as the phenol chloroform and isoamyl alcohol method. Among the inorganic DNA extraction, two are the most popular, the use of proteinase K and the use of salt. The proteinase K DNA extraction method facilitates high DNA yield, but the method is time consuming. Also, if not maintained well in a cold chain, the proteinase K cannot be utilized for a longer period of time. The salting out method is a safer method compared to the phenol chloroform method. The use of salts such as sodium chloride, potassium acetate, and ammonium acetate helps in the DNA extraction. However, the method is more aggressive in combination with proteinase K. The next method is the silica-based method. Now this method of extraction is very unique and very different from the other DNA extraction methods. This method works on the unique chemistry of interaction between the silica and the DNA. And that ends this video about the DNA extraction. The different methods will be discussed in the next video. Thank you for watching.